to have you here. We're here to worship. Let God have his way. We will be having a meeting after the 4th of July about our Bible school. Trying to get things together on it. And uh, we'll wait till then. Turn with me this morning to Matthew chapter 16, if you will. Start at verse 24. got some scriptures this morning that I've never put together before in my life, but the uh, Lord gave me this message, and uh, I'm going to put these scriptures together and see how they turn out. I believe it's going to be all right. I know it's been hot this week, but praise God, if you don't live right, there's a place you can go that's going to be hot. Yes, so you better be living right, you better be walking right, doing right, talking right. Praise God. Matthew chapter 16, verse 24. Start in verse 24. <coughs> Everybody there. Then said Jesus unto his disciples, If any man will come after me, let him deny himself, and take up his cross, and follow me. For whosoever will save his life shall lose it, and whosoever will lose his life for my sake shall find it. There's one place right there I really want you to look at. Take up his cross. Take up his cross. I want you to think about that as I go into this this morning. Now I want you to turn over with me to... Uh, 2 Corinthians. Chapter 12. Verses 7 through 4. For thee. For my strength is made perfect in weakness. 
Most gladly, therefore, will I rather glory in my infirmities that the power of Christ may rest upon me. Therefore, I take no pleasure in infirmities, in reproaches, in necessities, in persecution, in distress. For Christ's sake, for then I am weak, then, I am, then am I strong. That's hard to understand, isn't it? How can I be weak whenever I am strong? How can things, I'm going to tell you something. With this God that we're serving, with this Lord that is blessing us, you might be carrying your cross this morning, and I believe every one of us are. You might be in a place this morning that you don't know which way to turn, and you're carrying that cross in, in the best way you know how. Praise God. And every one of you in here this morning has got some battle scars from the crosses that you carry. Praise God. Uh, some of them might be an operation. Some of them might be uh, of, of things that's happened, a car wreck. Some of them might be uh, uh, just uh, things that's happened in your life that people's been mean to you and hateful to you, trying to uh, tear you down and destroy you. But you're carrying that cross upon your back today. You're carrying that thing and you're trying to, to live the life, but you have, you've got the battle scars upon you. You've got them all over you because of things that's happened in your life and the things that's gone on. Praise God. You know, whenever we get old, they say we start so showing one another scars from the operations and all that we've had. But I'm going to tell you something. A battle scar is the greatest thing you can show. The battle scar that we put upon us because we know there's a God that loves us and cares for us. And he's brought us through the battle. He's blessed us. He's given us what we need. And that's what he did for Paul here. He blessed him. He might have had an infirmity in his body. He might have had problems. The people might have looked at him. And whenever he went out to pray for people, he might have looked at it and said, Oh, how can I pray for somebody? I've got an infirmity. I've heard preachers say, well, I was going to go out and pray for somebody, but I was sick that morning. I didn't feel like I could pray for them because I was sick. I want to tell you something. Whenever we put everything out of our minds and get the Holy Ghost anointing in us and let the Spirit of God move up and down our spine, we don't think about self, but we only think about others, and God's able to bless us. And that's what we need to get to. That's where Paul was in his life. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Thank you, Jesus. Come on. Hallelujah. Therefore, I take no pleasure in infirmities and reproach, of necessities and persecution and distress. For Christ's sake, for when I am weak, then I am strong. I am become a fool in glory. Ye have compelled me. For I ought to have been commended of you. For in nothing am I behind the very chiefest apostle, though I be nothing. Hmm. Sometimes. Preachers think they're something. They think because there's a crowd of people there to listen to them preach. They think because people want to hear them. They think because, I'm going to tell you something. Whenever we find out we're nothing, but that God's anointing, that holy God's blessings upon you is what leads you and guides you, that anointing. That's where Paul was at. I might, I might have been, he said, I might be carrying my cross and people might be looking up to me, but in my heart, I feel like I'm nothing. In my heart, I know that I'm nothing. But there's a God that is greater than all that is in me. There's a God that loves me whenever nobody else cares. There's a God that lifts me up whenever nobody can see it because he's still living on the inside of me. Even though I'm carrying that cross, even though there's things going on in my life, God still loves me. And he, he's just wooing me and just blessing me. Thank God for a God like it. Truly the signs of an apostle were wrought among you in all patience, in signs and wonders and mighty deeds. Chapter 11, verse 23 and 27. Right, just right back over. Paul's telling the people here. He says of Corinthians, Are the ministers of Christ, I speak as a fool, I am more in labors, more in abundance, in stripes above measure. In prison more frequently, in deaths often. He was around people that were dying. He was in death more often because he was in prison. He was in old cold prisons where nobody loved him. Nobody cared for him. He was put into places. He was beaten. He was beaten by his own fellow men. They didn't love him. They didn't care for him. And you wonder why in the world does somebody want to serve God? And some of us sitting in here this morning, we've got it blessed. We're blessed and we, 
We've got it made. God has blessed us and, and given us abundantly. You say, well, I don't have as much as my neighbors. I don't have as much as everybody else. Well, praise God. If you've got food on your table, you've got clothes on your back, you've got gas in the car, the car breaks up, you are a blessed person this morning. God has given unto you beyond compare. And we need to realize that God loves us enough that he's going to take care of us. He's going to bless us. We need to quit sitting around grumbling about carrying that cross for Jesus. What we need to do is look out and say, help me, Lord, to do more for you. Paul, he's they're trying to tell the Lord here. He's trying to say, Lord, I know that I'm a fool. I don't have anything to say to these people unless the anointing comes. Praise God. There's nothing that anybody in here can say unless the anointing comes. And God blesses it. God anoints it. And whenever he does, you're going to be able to tell the people what they need to hear. It's going to prick the ears. It's going to prick the heart. The soul's going to rise up and they're going to fall on their knees and accept this Lord as Lord and Savior. Amen. Carrying a cross means more than what people are preaching today. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Of the Jews, five times received by 40 stripes. Save one. 39 stripes, Paul says. Five times he took 39 <coughs> stripes. Thrice was I beaten with rods. Once I was stoned. Thrice I suffered shipwreck. A night and a day I have been in the deep. In journey and often in pearls of waters. In pearls of robbers, in pearls of mound, countrymen and in pearls by the heathen, in pearls of the city and pearls in the wilderness, in the pearls of the sea and the pearls false brethren, in the weariness and painfulness, in watching often, in hunger and thirst, in fasting often, in cold and naked. My preachers today, I tell you, they ain't going to preach. They'll tell you that's what you're going to do to make them. They're going to tell you how you're going to build this, them this cathedral for them to preach and hear Paul in the middle of a prison. <laughs> Said hurting, been beaten, been striped, been beaten with a reed, shipwrecked, bit by a viper, and praise God just shook that thing off into the fire. Had all these things that happened in his life. And still stood up for a God that loved him. And some of you in here, sometimes you think about quitting and throwing up your hands and giving up. I want to tell you something. It's time that you reach down, pick up your cross, look at the, the, the star, scars and the pains that uh, you suffered. Look at the things in your life that's happened to you. And say, God, you bless me though and you've given unto me. I might have some scars. I might have some pains. But I'm still serving a living God that's going to deliver me. He's going to take me where I need to go. And I'm going to stay for you, God. Amen. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Oh, wait a minute. Wait a minute. Oh, down Thomas. Oh, down Thomas. Some of you in here might be down Thomas. You can't believe Jesus till you see. You can't believe God till you see. All the other disciples had seen Jesus. He appeared to them on different occasions, but Thomas wasn't there. They went back and told old Thomas, and old Thomas, he couldn't believe. Praise God. You remember whenever Jesus drug that old cross up, Golgotha, he hung on it for a few hours and give up the ghost and praise God. Uh, some people think, well, they laid him in that tomb dead. No, he went in that tomb alive. People. He wasn't dead. He went in that tomb alive. He went in there living because, praise God, his father breathed life back into him. And praise God, in the middle of that tomb, he went to the midst of hell. He told the devil, said, come here, devil. I can imagine. I can imagine whenever Jesus started walking through the pits of hell, they're going down to get to death, uh, get the keys to death, hell in the grave. And he started walking through that old pit and that old devil. I can hear him shaking now. I bet his knees were sort of like uh, uh, Nebuchadnezzar. I mean, uh, Belshazzar's knees. Whenever he was there in there in that handwriting came on the wall, I bet the devil's knees started knocking together and he was scared to death because he knew he'd done lost the best thing he'd ever had because he had the keys to death, hell, and the grave. And praise God, whenever Jesus' son died on that old rugged cross, he knew he had lost. Praise God. We are victorious because we're serving a living God that cares for us and loves us. Thank you, Jesus. Praise 
Oh, about Thomas. Oh, I hadn't seen him. I hadn't seen him. He says he did. Jesus appeared again. <laughs> oh, down Thomas, just look here the palms of my hands. Just, just stretch your finger in here. Down Thomas, just, just stretch your fingers in here. Feel and see if I'm not real. Then he, then he called and said, here, feel my side where the old spear went in. Look right here at my side. Look what happened to me. Sometimes whenever we have to go and things happen to us and we don't like what happened to us and, and we're in pain and we're, we're, we're griping about what's going on in our life and we're complaining and we haven't prayed, we haven't sought God's face, all we've done is sit around and complain about everything that's going on. We're not holding up on that cross and we're not dragging it. But what we're doing, we're saying, God, you're not sufficient for my needs. God, you haven't blessed me. God, you haven't took care of me. I'm going to tell you right now, God will take care of you. But he expects you to be not like Dalton Thomas. He expects you to believe him and trust in him. Put your faith in him. And he shall deliver you. Amen. Because you know what? He said, praise God for those that are believing have never seen. I've never seen him. I've never seen Jesus. People think we're crazy because we serve God. The scientists think we're just full of uh, this hot air. The scientists think that we don't have anything in our life. I want to take some. I'm glad I've got a higher being inside of me. I'm glad that somebody lives inside of me that can lead me and guide me. I want to tell you something. There's some of you in here that might have some scars after you picked up your cross. Because you picked up things you shouldn't have picked up. There's alcoholics that their liver is heat up because they stayed with alcohol and tried to say that we were serving God and still messing with the alcohol. There's drug addicts that are still picking up drugs. You say, no, wait a minute, Brother Keith. <coughs> Everything I take has got a prescription with it. Well, let me tell you something. Not everything the doctor gives you is good for you either. Nope. Sometime or another, you've got to say, enough's enough. Sometime or another, you got to say, I can live with this pain. That's what Paul was saying. I might have some pain. I might have some problems. I might have some things going on in my life. But I'm going to pick up this cross and I'm going to follow Christ. I'm going to move on with Christ. I'm not going to lay down. I'm not going to give up. I'm not going to quit. But I'm going on with Christ. I've been in a shipwreck. Praise God. I've had all they've tried killing me. They've tried to destroy me. they tried to put me in prison and, and let me die there. But we're serving the God that will deliver us. I can remember whenever him and Paul and Silas we're in that old prison and praise God they started praying and singing praises unto God and the Holy Ghost started moving and a great earthquake came, shook all the doors loose, shook the socks and chains off all the prison and none of them run because God's anointing was on that prison God's blessing was on that prison because there was one man that needs salvation I want to tell you something, God don't come just for one man every time but praise God, he's here this morning to bless you and show you that he will take care of you if you'll allow him to do it Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Glory. He's alive. He's Glory to God. Hallelujah. <laughs> Woo, glory. Come on. <coughs> on. I love the preacher. I love to get with it. Just slow down. I want you to understand that. Whenever we pick up that cross, people think, oh man, God's going to feed me. God's going to clothe me. He's going to give me a new car to drive. That's what preachers think whenever they go to seminar. Praise God. All right. Cadillacs, Lincolns, and all these great cars. That's what they think. They think God's going to give them everything they want in their life. And if they don't get it, they'll move on to another church. I'm going to tell you something. I'm not just preaching against sinners. I'm preaching against some of the preachers out here that are trying to deceive and try to steal and try to take that, what they don't deserve. I'm going to tell you something. God will give you what you deserve. If the people don't give it to you, God will make a way and he'll give it to you. But if they had to learn how to trust God, then God would make a way. And the problem is people are trusting in themselves. They're not picking up that cross and saying, God, I'm with you. God, whatever you want me to be, God, I'll be it. But what they do, whenever they go to a church and the church isn't good to them, they'll stay there a while and then they'll go off to the next church and they'll tell them, 
in that church how sorry the other church was to them. And then they'll go to another church and tell them how sorry they were to them. And they just keep moving around trying to find that right church that's going to make them a millionaire. I'm going to tell you what. I don't have no money much. I don't have nothing much. But I'm a millionaire because I got God in my heart. I have a soul that's for my heart. And I know that God's going to bless me. And you can believe whatever you want to believe. I could be a millionaire and still not be rich. But if you've got God, you're the richest person in here today. That's Amen. 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 Because God loves you. God cares for you. God's going to bless you. Even though you've got the battle scars. Even though you've got problems. You say, why does God let me go through this? Why is this happening to me? We want God to have pity on us. What did Jesus say? He looked out among that crowd. He said, forgive them. They don't know what they do. This world don't know what they're doing to God. This world don't know how they're treating my Lord. This world don't care. But we're serving a God that cares and loves us. He wants to nurture us. He's like, he's like that little chick, that old hen that would grab those little babies and just put them up under and nurture every one of them. Storm comes home, there's no place for her to go to shelter. She'll take those babies and she'll hide them under. I've seen a, a fox come and praise God, she'll put herself over those babies and let that old fox take her head off. Because she loved those babies. God's like that. Whenever the enemy comes and the enemy's trying to destroy us, God comes and he takes care of us. God blesses us. But we forget that. Whenever we're dragging that little cross, it gets heavy sometimes and we get burdened down and we want to say, what's the use? Why do we even serve God? I want to tell you why you want to serve God. Because that old cross is going to get easy. Because you might be going up the mountainside this morning, but praise God, there's a mountaintop experience heading your way and God's going to be there and he's going to bless you. Oh, but praise God, brother. If I get to the mountaintop experience, there's another side going down the other way. There sure is, and there's going to be another valley. But I can tell you right now, God's going to be with you, and you're going to go right back up that mountaintop because God's going to lead you. God's going to guide you. That's the God we're serving. Bearing your cross doesn't mean everything's going to be wonderful. Paul didn't have a wonderful life. He had some friends. Paul wasn't poor before he ever started preaching. He was a tent maker. He had monies. Monies didn't make him happy. Carrying his cross for Jesus made him happy. You say, you mean to tell me, sitting in the middle of a prison, sitting there and suffering, and the shame of having to say God hadn't delivered him made him happy? God had delivered him. Even whenever he was there, took him on the ship and took him to the other side and said, we're going to kill you, Paul. What did Paul ask for? He asked for his old coat, old cloak, he said. Send me my cloak. Send me my parchment papers. He had some papers he wanted. And he said, Tim, you can't even come see me. I love you, sir. Come see me. I put them in my own words. That's all he asked for. He didn't say, hey, go over and get all the money I got in the bank out and hide it. He didn't say, Put somebody in charge of that tent making company that they can get it rich, that it'll be wonderful, and, and, and they'll prove that God's in me. He didn't ask for that. He said, Bring my old coat because it was cold in prison. Bring me those parchment papers that I need. And Timothy, come see me before the weather gets bad. Say all over me. Say all over me. That's all he asked for before he's going to give his life. And what do we ask for? <coughs> what are we keeping bagging God for? What do we say, God, I need this, and God, I need that? We get a little headache, we get a little pain, we get a little, little something, and we say, God, I can't do. God, I can't do that. God, God, I just can't do it no more, God. I just can't do it no more. You know why? It's because we're not putting God first. Right. If God asks us to pick up the phone and call somebody, oh, Lord, I'm embarrassed to talk to them about Jesus. Lord, I, I don't know what to say. If I go down there and I go down and talk to them about coming to church, I don't know how to ask them. God said, in that hour, I'll give you what to say. Yes. You might not know what to say. But if you'll pick up that cross and walk with God, you'll never be alone. You'll never be alone. And I promise you, Jesus won't ride on that cross. He won't ride on it. He'll help you pull it along. 
Because he'll be right in your heart and your soul. And he'll be helping you lead along. He'll be blessing you. He'll be giving you what you need. You say, well, Brother King, you just said I might still have problems. Just because we're Christians don't mean we don't have problems. Everybody, they think whenever they get saved, everything's going to be perfect in their life. There's a life that's coming that's going to be perfect. Right now, you're fighting the devil every day. If you're a Christian and you're a child of God, the devil's coming at you with everything he's got. Because just as much as I know and you know that we're close to the return of Christ, he knows it. And what he's trying to do, he's trying to steal the very elect. He's trying to destroy your walk with God. And there's so many people that have picked up the cross and they've laid it down because it was painful. They've laid it down because they thought everything in the road was going to be perfect. And it's not, perfect. it's not perfect. This is not perfect life. This is not perfect life. There's a life that's coming that's going to be perfect. You won't have to lock on your door. You won't have to worry about your neighbor. There's not going to be any selfishness. Well, I don't understand that. Come on. <laughs> People are so selfish today. It's unreal. Amen. They are. They're so selfish. No selfishness. Everybody's going to love one another. Not going to hear one talking about another. And a lot of people think they go into heaven and you go sit down and talk to them a few minutes and, and, they, and they run down and, and run down everybody they meet. Be careful. Because that, not, that talk ain't going to go to heaven and guess what? You can't do it here. Be careful. Be careful. Jesus. Showing doubt and Thomas, those old Thomas. Jesus said, I am I bore my cross. I bore my cross. It left them off. It left them off. In the palms of Jesus. <coughs> How many of you in here this morning has got a scar? How many of you in here this morning that maybe some of your family don't love you because you're a Christian now? How many of you in here this morning that are sitting here and maybe you fail God in places and and, and, you, and you, God was trying to woo you back in and, and things happened to you and, and it scarred you. It scarred you, maybe your body or your life and, and, and you, you're wearing those scars this morning. You see, you're bearing, you're bearing your cross. You've got some scars. You've got some. Any good soldier can show you a war wound because praise God, he's got some. You remember? Whenever World War II was going on, soldiers came back, their feet, Toes were froze off. They didn't have some of the toes. Fingers, some of them were froze off. Men and women come back now, maybe with one leg and one arm. War, though, they've got the scars from things that's happened. Scars. Maybe you've got some scars in your heart of some things that's happened to you while you were carrying that cross. And maybe those scars are getting, they say whenever they operate on you, if they don't get that skin back together just right, that it'll quarter, it quarterize like, you know, it makes a, makes a hard place down to it. And a lot of times they have to go back in, they have to cut that place out and make it smooth because the harder that place gets, if it rubs against something, it's like leather inside of you, it rubs against it, and they have to go back in there and fix it to make it smooth. They have to make it work. It doesn't rub against our all the time. Well, you see, if we hold against God, everything that's happened to us since we've been a Christian, and we hold it in account to Him, because the, God, if it been, if you would have not let this happen, then I wouldn't feel this way. God, if you wouldn't have let this happen, I wouldn't be on my mark this way. God, if you would have done different, then things would have been different. And we hold that in our heart. And what that thing does, it cauterizes. And it grows in there. And it makes us mad at one another. It makes us mad at people we've met. It makes us upset with things that's went on in our life. And, and we let that thing grow. And what it does, it starts rubbing. And we want a little peace. So what do we do? We turn away from loving God. We turn away from loving God. 
turn away from loving God? What's the use? What's the use? I heard all the time. And if we fall on our knees and say, God, help me to forgive everything that's happened to me. God, help me to love you like Paul was talking about here. He could tell all the things that went on in his back. He could tell all the things that had happened. He could tell everything that almost took his life. But no place in the Word of God do I find where God ever laid anything to God. He took it upon himself and realized that he was carrying that old rugged cross for himself. He knew that God loved him. And you and I need that same humble heart today. You and I need to love God in that same manner today. We need to let God forgive us and ask him to and say, God, if there's anything in this old soul or in this old heart, not like you, God, help me to let it heal, that it be smooth, that I can live for you and trust you and not hold anything against you. Because he loves us. You're his child. He loves you. He cares for you. He wants to bless you. You say, Brother Ken, you're saying if I pick up my cross and I serve God, it's not all going to be roses. And he may have to serve the devil. That we all have sometime or another. And you know what? I found out my life when it's a rough to serve the devil. There was a lot of hard places. There was a lot of hard places that I could do nothing about. But serving God, I'm not in it alone. I got somebody with me. He's going to help me. He's going to woo me along the way. He's going to pull me. He's going to help me. And sometimes, maybe I just can't believe. Or maybe I'd be like Dalton Thomas and I just can't believe. God is going to help me believe. God's going to help me to trust Him. I want you to know this morning, if we've ever picked up our cross and served this God and loved Him, now's the day to trust Now's the day to trust God. Now's the day to live for Him. If you're here this morning, Maybe you're here and maybe you're at a point in your life where you wonder why you really want to serve God. Maybe you're at a point of trying to make up your mind to serve God. And maybe you're saying, well, I hear people that's not Christians. It seems like they got more problems than I got. Seems like they don't know which way to turn. Sometimes it's called Christian they pick up the cross and really surrender to God. Be careful who you talk to. Make sure it's somebody that's picked up that old rugged cross and said, God, I surrender my soul, my mind, my thoughts, everything that is me unto you. And if you go forth that way, I'm going to promise you, you might talk to that person a while and they might tell you some of the problems they've had in their life. But there's going to be enough joy and enough love to override all the cauterized places in that old soul and heart. There's going to be enough love and there's going to be enough joy and happiness serving this God that you want somebody to. That's the reason they used to hide churches behind the train tracks because those people were happy. They had the joy. And praise God, the uptown people didn't want to hear it. They didn't want to hear how God blessed them and how God lifted them up. <laughs> I'm going to tell you something this morning. You're serving the living God that cares for you. Sure, I've had pain. I've had suffering. started off this message with a sinus headache right through this eye, right through the back of my head, and I was thinking, how in the world am I going to preach? How in the world am I going to stand before these people and preach? Whenever the anointing came, Amen. the headache was gone. I've been up here before, 
and had a kidney stone. It hurt so bad whenever I was sitting out here, I couldn't hardly get to the pulpit. Get up in the pulpit and never even know I even had a back. <coughs> the anointing clears all. The anointing makes a difference. The anointing. I'm going to tell you something. If you're here this morning and you haven't picked up your cross, or maybe you're carrying your cross a little fearlessly and you've been fussing at God about it. Maybe you're not happy with your salvation. Salvation should be happiness. It should be love. It should be glory. It should be some joy. That's right. You don't have that in your heart this morning? You don't have that in your life? You're trying to figure out how to make your life better? I beg you this morning to come up here with me and fall in this altar and give God your heart. Pick up that old rugged cross. If it ain't better than anything you've ever had in your life, you come right back tomorrow and say, Lord, I don't want it. But I promise you, the Word of God says, if you taste of me, taste of it, it'll be something better than you've ever had in your life. Just that little taste of God. You might run, you might hide, but you can't outrun God. He knows where you're at. He said, my calling is without repentance. I run and I hide. I hear. But he knew where I was. And he told me I had to pick up that cross. I was going to make heaven my home. He said, don't ask me to lay down my cross. I got my mind made up. I got to put on the rock. And I'm ready to see Jesus for myself. I hope you've enjoyed some of this. This morning, I, I feel like it's from God. I never put these scriptures together like this. The anointing is so real up here this morning. I could feel it before I ever even got to the pulpit. I knew I had the message God wanted to preach to you this morning. I knew God was going to be here. I know He's going to show up. Whenever He shows up, He shows out. I'm going to tell you something. If you're here this morning, and you're not assured of your salvation. This is a no so, salvation. It's not no, I think so. I hope so. Yeah. It is a no, so salvation. I can know that my name is written down in the Lamb's Book of Life. Yeah. Brother Ken, how can I know that? Because Jesus lives in my heart. I can know that. Maybe you're here this morning. Maybe God's spoken to your heart. And maybe He said you need some help carrying that old cross. Or maybe you just need to surrender to God. This altar's here for that. Maybe your friends have denied you and pushed you to the side. It's just a little scar. Don't worry about it. Everything's going to be all right. God will give you a new group of friends. He'll bless you. Maybe you feel like nobody cares. Nobody loves you. There's a God that loves you. He can open doors. That no man can shut. He's a God that cares for us. If you're here this morning and God's spoken to your heart, don't you leave out of this place till you come by this altar. Say, Brother Ken, is there time? There's always time for God. Praise God. I'll stay here all day if you need it. It don't matter to me. Your soul means more to me than anything I got to do. Oh, Brother Ken, you got to go eat. No, I don't. I can feast on the Heavenly Father. I can feast on the love of the Spirit of God. If you're here this morning, in the sound of my voice, God spoke to you. You don't know Jesus. Maybe you're not ready. I beg you this morning, make those steps. You say, Brother Ken, everybody thinks I'm saved. I don't care what people think. It's what you know. You're not coming for people. You're coming for yourself. You're coming because it's God's dealt with your heart. 
You're coming because God loves you. And you want to give your soul back to Him. You're coming. Because God said, now's your day. Won't you come? Anyway. Christians, pray with me this morning. Pray aloud this morning. But I want you to pray for souls. Ask God to save souls. Dear Heavenly Father, you know each and every one that's here this morning, God. And God, there's some here this morning, God, that I know. They're not ready to meet you, Lord. God, I'm calling them this morning, God, through you. God, I'm asking them, God, I'm giving them all the here in this altar, God. God, I'm asking you, Lord, just to help them make the first steps, God. Just help them to come. Souls are the most important thing in this world. Souls. They can go to heaven and live with a heavenly Father.